So it's about half an hour, you reckon? What? The recording. How long do you go for? Until we feel like we've talked enough. Mm. And normally, what's that like? But talk here, because yeah, yeah. no, no, I no. started recording now. Have you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're live. Oh, welcome. L- no, no, let me just... Uh, <laughs> Wait, just hold on. Now we're live. Oh, great. <laughs> Welcome. Dude, we can talk how long we want to talk. Okay. Uh, if we feel like we've talked enough in half an hour, we can finish it there. Mm. I would say the average recording time of my podcasts are about an hour and a half. Wow. Maybe an hour 45. Wow. You know I'm a chatty Cathy. Yeah. Didn't so know that much of a chatty yeah, they do. <laughs> I've had a podcast. There was one Saturday where I did a two and a half hour podcast with an army guy, and then before and after, there's obviously another bit of chatting, and then in the evening, I did a two hour addictions podcast. So I did about four and a half hours of podcasting that day, and I was fucked. I'm sure. <laughs> I was I'm so sure, tired, man. And then a. Uh, um, like two months ago, I did three <coughs> podcasts in 24 hours, which also totaled something like uh, six hours. Mm. And I was so tired, man. Mm. It's awesome. You mm. learn a lot. Mm. But learning makes the brain tired, yeah. or my yeah. brain at least. Yeah. 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 So I'm just checking the voice levels here. Sounds looks pretty decent. Yep. Are you comfy, man? Yeah, yeah no, I'm good. I'm what good. are we yeah, talking yeah. about? Spirituality. Yeah, spirituality, growth, <laughs> personal growth, like like evolution of the soul. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See where we go. Or are know. we talking about Michael the <laughs> artist? <laughs> whatever happens, whatever comes up. I think um, I'm not an expert on anything. Eh? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, <laughs> what I know is what is what I've been taught. Yeah, man. But I just want to. Um, the main reason I said to you to come tonight, it's obviously to talk about spirituality mm. because we both follow a journey mm. and um, like we both change our perspectives regularly yeah. and um, the way you the way you learn and then you tell me how you learn, it's like, okay, I can learn from that as well. Yeah. And that's basically why I wanted to invite you. Yeah, yeah. I think so much of... Um well, so much of my life now has been about that. It's about it's about sharing and trying to help someone else. Mm. Um, otherwise, what's the point? You know, I think um, maybe that is the purpose of life: is to try to help someone and try to um, share share your experience with mm. them, and so that they can benefit from it, or so yeah. that they can enhance their own uh, growth and journey, their own spiritual journey. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, man. I'm going to just remember to keep this bad boy in front of you Yeah, and try to keep the... Can you hear yourself when you talk? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, let's talk about that idea or that concept of resentment that you gave me the other night. Okay. Because I know like uh, when we're having dinner, like we couldn't go too deep into it, mm. but I quite like what you were saying. Mm. about resentments yeah we start off there yeah man and then we take it from there yeah I think so often we think of a resentment as um, an anger something that we're angry about yeah um, or a person that we're angry towards or that we we carry, we've carried anger it's undealt with anger but but the meaning the real the root meaning of resentment is to re-feel mm. I think it's Latin or something but so it's feelings that we replay that yeah. we've carried like old ideas um old beliefs so like that we've grown that we've that that we've been conditioned with as children sometimes like even just moments of um like one day in our life as a child mm. um gave rise to a feeling that we carry with us mm. um like like i'm unloved yeah. or or my father never loved me. Mm. Um, that I don't deserve to be angry. That I don't deserve to be happy or successful. Um, yeah, I think our our ego so often will tell us things that that is like bullshit. You know, like our ego will say, 
um, that we're going to fail, that we're not worthy, that we're not useful. Mm. Mm, our ego will tell us that we're less than, that we're undeserving, like I said. And then at the same, on the flip side of the coin, our ego will say, I'm better than, I'm, I'm more spiritual than, mm, my ego will tell me that I'm richer, I'm more good looking, I'm more successful. Mm. And both of those things are, are lies, you know. Well, where do you think that ego comes from? Well, an ego, I think, is a reaction to certain uh, conditioning, the conditioning, mm. um, a reaction to um, a perception, maybe sometimes a misguided perception or a reaction to a, like a trauma, possibly, or, um, yeah, something that's traumatic or that was perceived as traumatic. Yeah. I think the ego starts to build and to protect it's a protection mechanism. Does, yeah. it, does it make sense? No, no, it makes oh. sense. Mm. It's like, um, I don't know if this is the way you see it, but it's like, you know, someone that's arrogant, like they condition that whenever they feel threatened, then behave like an arrogant prick yeah. rather than just acknowledging that you feel insecure, yeah. that you may be nervous. Yeah. So it's like completely contradictory to what you're actually feeling. For sure. It's born out of fear. Mm. I think fear of um, fear of being exposed or fear of not being liked. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a mask. It's a, I think, um, and I think a, a journey like the journey we on is a, a journey of uh, of self discovery. Mm. Um, maybe of stripping those things away, or at least becoming aware of them. You know. Mm. Um, and just by being aware of them, they start to change, and perhaps that fear falls away, and and um, we become more real. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Those masks, those personas, that kind of drop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of like, and I think of a time that you've ever behaved arrogantly, and I can't think of it. Mm. How does your ego come out? Yeah, sometimes it can be um, like a reverse thing, you know, like um, like false pride or okay. um, false humility. All right. You know, how you does that work? You pretend to be humble, <laughs> <laughs> but you and so people think, oh wow, he's so humble. You know, yeah. <laughs> he's such a he's such a sweet guy. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. If anyone but, um, sees me looking like this, I've got two cats. And the fuckers are playing, and uh, recently they started jumping onto my laptop. Oh. So I'm mm. just seeing if I should hit either. <laughs> you think they might adjust the volume levels? And oh. then the people that want to judge me because I hit my cats, then please do that. They love me dearly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I don't mind being hit. <laughs> that's the next topic of spirituality is that, you know, it's fascinating. Like if you take that topic of hitting your cat and it still loves you. And then I justify it like that. It's almost like parents saying, like, I hit my children, but they still love me. Mm. Or like I put cigarettes out on my children's arms, <laughs> <laughs> but they still love me. <laughs> and then how you as a child grow up that that is normal or acceptable or there's some weird wiring suddenly going on in your head. Mm. Mm. And then having to figure this out in later life and challenge everything that you've been raised with. I don't know if that falls into your idea of spirituality. Well, well I suppose so. I think, um, yeah, if we, I don't know, for me, okay, I must talk from my own, from my own experience. I no, think... No, no dude, you, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> There's no <laughs> rules here. Well, Let's just quickly say poos. <laughs> <laughs> Because Mike's scared that he's going to say something that we've got to edit. So I'm just putting that out there. And now okay. Mike's like, okay, okay, I can say anything. Okay, so we don't have to edit that out. Dude, I'm not editing nothing. Like, if people don't like it, then whatever. Like, this is not about the listeners. This is about me and you having yeah. a conversation. I know yeah. it's weird with the camera there and you've got yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. But yeah. it's about us, you yeah. know, and it's about me having this. And if I have one view or a million, it should be about, am I enjoying this? So we can mm. talk about 
you know my experience but you can also say i think mm. whatever mm. Mm. yeah well i think <laughs> there we go <laughs> um we we each one of us is con you know we conditioned you know and mm. we conditioned by our parents and they are conditioned by their parents and this conditioning um seems normal Mm-hmm. Whatever the situation is, yeah. you know, your father gets home drunk and he beats you every Friday, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you start building resentment. Yeah, you, st- you start the belief system, and um, that becomes normal. Yeah. But what's the solution to resentment? Because that was what we were talking about. When was it on Tuesday night? Yeah. So, what, in your opinion, what's the solution to resentment, or the way you well, understand it now? The solution is to let it go, and well. Well, I think, actually, first I wanted to talk about, uh, like, the, the root of the word spirituality is very yeah. interesting. Um, uh, also, it's Greek, I think, uh, the root of that word, um, um, resentment is Latin. But mm. now, I think, as far as I know, spirituality is Greek, and it means to breathe. Simple. To breathe? Yeah. Okay. So, it's, it's like, spirituality is about life. Um, and so you get words that are derived from the same root like inspire means to get new breath Mm. and uh, conspire means we breathe together okay and expire means like your credit card expires or the Mm -hmm. meter the car meter expires it means it runs out of breath okay so it's quite nice you know Mm. it's just about breathing it's Mm. about being present in many ways and also f- f- it's about being aware mm-hmm. so in other words waking up to the conditioning just just that's all just becoming aware of it really mm-hmm. i think and i think that's where just about everything <laughs> begins in <you know>, our way <laughs> like you said yeah our way that was years ago remember our way our way but that's yeah. also a Stellenbosch thing man like if you grow up around you yeah, like yeah. or in my era our at way. least yeah. that was like still, a, it's no, a standard think, greeting yeah it's no, still it like is, but I think it's ch- the culture's changed but it's still um, yeah I had a friend uh, we were we were having coffee the other day and he's about 45, 48, something like that. And he's got two teenage kids. Yeah. And he said he took them to the spur. He's like, and when he saw again, they were both eating a salad. And he was furious. He's like, what the fuck are my teenage children, <laughs> two boys, <laughs> doing at the spur, not eating a fucking burger or a steak? Like, what has the world come to? So I'm sure the cultural gap, I, I'm sure there's not too many. <laughs> Maybe the odd potato too <laughs> <laughs> still <laughs> represents. Yeah. No, um, no, I think waking up is a bit part of life, you know. I think hopefully, I think um, we s- hopefully reach a point where we kind of start to look at things um, in reality. Because I think uh, so much of our society is avoiding that, is avoiding spiritual spirituality, mm-hmm. is avoiding uh, reality. Mm-hmm. We live in such an addictive society, um, and it seems and self self centered and egotistical, mm-hmm. where people, um, where we think so much about ourselves first and foremost, and um, we're asleep, you know. Um, Mm. But I think everything begins at least with becoming aware, you know. So dropping those resentments, those old ideas, those old beliefs begins with be- becoming aware of them, mm. you know. And not, I don't. I mean, I have tried, but and you can try as oh, well, I, I've tried as much as I like to get rid of them, and it doesn't really work. But mm. but just by being aware of them, they do. Sit, tend to fall, drop away. That makes sense. Um, Because if one can work on these things and go and write and and do therapy and everything like that, but ultimately our our natural spirit will take care of it Mm. by becoming aware of it, you know. 
And can you give them like a more practical type of example? Like mm. this resentment, these type of actions, mm. avoid these type of actions, how the ego tries to get involved. Mm. How do you mean? Can you, get, can you give an example? Then? Well, let's say, so um, I don't know, I've got a old friend that behaved like an arsehole mm. when I expected him <laughs> not to. Or, mm. Uh, mm. you know, I heard a story today about a guy that was fired and I'm like, that's unfair. Like, we can take those people to court and he lost a lot of money. So I'm sure that's a massive resentment for him, mm. Mm. you know, or... I don't know, some bastard cut me off on the road, I nearly had a crash. Mm, mm. You know, or I actually had a crash and I have a resentment. Mm, mm. I don't know. So how, how would you, you practice this whole awareness them? thing? <laughs> 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 it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, like I say, I do believe that they drop, that they do fall away just by becoming aware of them. And I, um, I always used to wonder, for, for, for years, wonder like that, uh, sp that spiritual teacher that used to teach, love your enemies. Oh, yeah. You know? And I thought, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> you what do I say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any enemies, you know? I'm not J.R. Ewing or someone like, who are my enemies, you know? Mm. Um, but I've come to understand that my enemies are the people I resent that I carry anger towards mm. and or someone that even someone that cut me off on the road or, or caused an accident mm -hmm. and why must I love them mm. you know um, but I think um, my enemies or the people that I resent ultimately teach me the most they teach me the most about myself um, because I also think that part of spirituality like so many teachers are teaching nowadays, is that we're all connected and that we're all human beings and that we all have the potential to cause an accident mm. or to be horrible or um, to hurt someone. Um, we all have that potential. And, and I think that's what um, our enemies teach us or all the people we resent. You know? and that in so many ways, they're the people that we should love the most and even a friend a good friend who's honest with you and tells you the truth and you walk away like feeling pissed off with him you know like that's not true or like da, da, da. and you go back i go back and think about it and i think no well actually he's right you know i am being selfish or whatever he said you know um or if he was honest and direct and and i immediately became resentful towards him and then he's he's opened up a um a new realization that maybe yeah maybe he's right you know and and a real friend's honesty means that they care about you that that's what real friends do mm. they're honest you know otherwise you know otherwise a relationship is not really worth that much mm -mm. um I mean, before in the past, I would, I would concentrate on my primary relationship, and become this nuclear cut off from the, uh, this this relationship completely cut off from the world, and my friends would be kept at a distance, and all other acquaintances and colleagues would be kept. You'd see them in that, but not really deal with things in a real way. Mm. I mean, well, even my primary relationship wasn't dealt with in a real way. The communication was wasn't great, you know. Mm. But um, <laughs> but I think going there, like dealing with something that's difficult and communicating about it, and s building resentment, letting it go, coming back, growing. Um, that's what makes a real relationship, whether it's a friendship or a primary mm. relationship, and 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 they're all equally important. You know, mm. I think it's part of the balance of life. It's like um, 
you know, your pri- primary relationship is not more important than having friends, having a, even just a group of friends that, that you're close with and that yeah. kind of know you pretty well and that you can go to you know, when you need help, you know. But would you say, like, um, it's like the more you love people, like, I, it's weird, like, I think the deepest love is obviously what I have for my wife. Yeah. Then there's a certain type of love that I have for my family members. Yeah. You know, and it, it's a weird love where I don't necessarily want to hang out with them. I'm quite comfortable sometimes to not talk to them for months on end. Yeah. But they weirdly part of me, you know, and it, it like, um, and then there's obviously other people, things, creatures like my cats or whatever. Mm. But it's weird with like certain relationships. The more I love someone, the more they have the ability to upset me, mm. hurt me, and it's almost like the resentment can be bigger. Mm. But then it's like, oh, is the resentment there because of the expectation was there? Yeah, possibly. I mean, you know, I are think, they connected? I think what you say is so true is we resent people the most, the people that are closest to us by far. And mm. we hurt them in, in re- response to that resentment, Yeah, that anger. Yeah, and I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, the biggest block to spiritual growth is anger. Mm. Um, and that's often um, connected with fear. It fears, uh, anger is an expression of fear in a way. But I, you know? we all know my anger is like quite bombastic yeah. with my personality. Like, how's your anger? Because you're so calm, relaxed, the yeah. sweet gentleman, okay. like sweet guy, <laughs> Mr. Artie. Like, how does your anger come out? Hmm. Doesn't. Yeah. It's bottled. <laughs> <laughs> gets bottled and put on the shelf. So what, like, cause, uh, like passive aggressive style? Yeah, I would just say I'm a more pre- passive aggressive than um, exploding kind of anger. Mm. Or, um, but I think I, you know the, where I am at now is I'm able to reflect quite quickly, mm. and to uh, uh, you know anger, just like any other emotion or feeling, anger is, is a sign to do something. It's a call to action. Mm. You know, um, just like fear or um, whatever, even sadness. It's a, it's a call to action, to do something. Mm. It's a call to action. So anger must be dealt with. Otherwise, it festers and it becomes a sickness of sorts. Whereas, uh, you know, it can become turn into depression or it can turn into some sort of explosion or you know, like murder even Jesus <laughs> eventually we <laughs> went from zero to a hundred quite quickly there <laughs> that should be dealt so with not you know even, like not <laughs> even cursing or spitting in someone's face stabbing them with a fucking knife or something <laughs> throwing yeah. them behind your car <laughs> yeah or suicide you know yeah yep. anger towards but oneself, it's just like you know? like one of my biggest learning curves this last few years is um, how to how to express and experience my anger in a healthy way mm. and in a constructive way. So mm. I'm really good at using anger to motivate and inspire me. I'm amazing. Mm. I always mm. feel like Dragon Ball Z, that fucking cartoon where they <laughs> channel mm. the energy and send it. So anger has been an amazing thing for me in my life. Um, mm. yeah, I would say like I was big into contact sports like rugby. Mm. So channel that anger and fuck people up. Then um, I got into metal mm. or like hard rock in a band. So it was like... Um, I don't know, man. It was this weird escape, like, fuck everyone, society, I'm this misfit, and then channel everything into the music and into my musical instrument. And like, like consciously this, doing it or, or just uh, naturally? Yeah, I think both, you know. I think um, it was just my go-to thing, like, you know, like smoking weed or drinking or mm. having a cigarette whenever you get a bit emotional. Mm. It was just like fucking go play music for an hour like let me mm. get out of here let me go jam or something mm. and then later it became like substances and now it's obviously without substances 
it's a bit of a weird thing. So I used to be quite passive aggressive. And then at one point I'm like, fuck, um, that's, so I'm angry with this person. Then mm -hmm. I'm passive aggressive. And then I'm angry at myself mm. because I didn't have the balls to say anything. Mm. Mm. So the lesser of two evils for me is say something, which is the right thing to do. But then I went from the one spectrum to the other one. Mm. Mm. And um, this last four years, because I'm getting really involved in life, I'm getting a lot of opportunities where people or life or society disappoints me. And... Um, like with our spiritual journeys mm. about 12 months ago i feel like i've let go of a lot of resentment and anger and i reached this point like oh so what do i do now yeah i'm like a lot of my hobbies was motivated and inspired <laughs> by anger yeah. like when i was chopping trees down i'm like i'm getting big and strong i can fuck up 10 guys like yeah. jesus these people gotta come at me like seriously are you rich like like let's throw down motherfucker <laughs> and it's like <laughs> i would do 10 hours of chopping trees down and suddenly the anger goes i'm like i don't really feel like chopping trees down mm. you know like uh killing myself in like triathlon type of stuff like i don't feel like doing that because i don't have that anger i don't have that edge mm. you know i'm just so easy going these days and i've found like i've got to find a new form of energy to push me forward if that yeah. makes sense. No, it does. You sound like Beethoven. <laughs> 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 you know, or... Yeah, but what about Mozart? Mozart didn't have anger. He had... Um, I don't know what he had that drove him. I, he, I think Picasso wanted to impress his father. Is it? Yeah, maybe he had some anger, but he was a workaholic, you know. Um... And uh, was Beethoven this... Yeah, he was quite angry. This and, emo uh, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could put it that way. <laughs> um, I don't know. I suppose one... You know, I, I don't see why one can't operate also on positive energies, you know, like mm. or, or more what seem to be more positive energies. But I, I think, th like, love or... Um, you know happiness whatever that's also an energy that can drive one surely you know curiosity is a good one for me mm. like my boxing that i started recently mm. I, I get this idea and i'm like that seems quite cool mm. and then it's like i don't know if it's curiosity or what it is but i get infatuated with something mm. Mm. you know like mm. when you start dating people then mm. you get infatuated with the activity or the person mm. and i get infatuated with activities so it's like mm. Let me buy maybe a boxing bag and gloves. Then I start doing fucking research. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Then I get the shit. Then I'm like, where am I going to hang it? Then I'm like, what clothes is the most comfortable to box in? Then I'm like, what music is cool? Then I'm like, <laughs> I feel awesome, but I'm sure I look like a retard. <laughs> and then I'm like, let me watch a few videos and get pointers. Then it's like, go implement the shit. Then I'm like, oh, but these muscles are feeling good. And I'm like, I really get uh, caught up with it. And Anya said, she loves it how i get into something but then it's normally a short lived yeah. six to nine months 12 month affair but i, I feel like, like that's how i channel my energy positively is just yeah. by finding new hobbies constantly yeah. and no, periodically like return to old ones yeah. and that's the way i don't know and it's, i think it's creativity mm. like mm. channeling that creativity yeah, I like it. I, like I don't know, it, yeah. man. I'm figuring it out. What music is the best music to listen to? What Fucking gangster yeah. rap, man. Eminem. Eminem, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eminem is a <laughs> top quality. But um, so I started off with uh, like gangster rap. So like, so I heard Eminem is the was the biggest selling artist last year. Wouldn't be surprised. Amazing. Huh? I think he released an sure album or something. You know, more than anyone apparently. Don't know, man. Amazing, yeah. I think it's uh, probably between him and I think Rihanna. I think she's huge and she's got so many hits. They yeah. actually do a lot of collaborations. Yeah. So, yeah. plus it's always interesting to compare. It's like when you talk about football, it's just like Pele and Maradona. And it's like, yeah. and then when they voted online, like Maradona won. But mm -hmm. I'm like, people that was watching 
Pele are not going to go online and go vote. Mm. It's also like if you re, uh, mm. if you look at the record sales, mm. you know, but he's he's amazing. Mm. So a lot of his stuff is quite cool. Mm. But then recently I've I've mixed it up. I've brought in a little bit of metal. So when uh, when I get angry with uh, society, mm. then I pop my uh, like Slipknot. Uh, I'm a quite a, a mellow metal fan. Mm, uh, maybe maybe like Keating. Maynard James two, Keating. We've got huh? quite a lot of two, um, but certain two songs. Mm. Um, mm. Then uh, Rise Against the Machine, stuff like that. So it's, like when I'm furious good. with, like I really feel like I'm gonna punch someone, then I'll pop that up mm. and I'll go hit the bag. But then when I'm just like in the easy zone, fucking gangster rap, man. Mm. Perfect. Mm. You mm. feel like you're in a movie. Mm. <laughs> so yeah man highly recommend boxing to anyone or kickboxing <laughs> just don't fuck up your knees like mine <laughs> you know with me I get like fuck yeah. and you can kick a thing quite hard um, yeah. but then obviously there's a lot of pressure on your knees so I'm not allowed to kick anymore for the next month mm. only boxing <laughs> <laughs> dude uh, want to get back to spirituality though mm. well this is probably all part of it but because you mentioned fear yeah, this is still one that I'm trying to figure out. Like mm. identifying fear and how do you ideally respond to fear? Mm. Yeah, I don't know if you have an answer on that Should or what your style is. Working on that. <laughs> <laughs> let's theorize on that. Wait, before we go there, let's. Um, so I, I've got this this friendship that's grown over the last few years. That's well over the last while. That's. Um, been quite a valuable friendship and mm. learned a lot together and grown together and um and it's it points where it's where it's been a bit difficult and then we've you know we've worked through those things and um grown and then um you know i think we're going kind of back to basics now with uh, so okay so he um so i was dishonest to him no, quite recently there was mm. some dishonesty there and he was hurt and then he came and spoke to me about it and um, so the dynamic is a bit stressed at the moment with this relationship so there's some sarcasm coming towards me which makes me feel a mm. bit more angry and then um, I feel like I should um, talk to him about it or at mm. least uh, confront him and then mm. I feel fearful like He's not going to like me anymore. The end of the friendship, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, I don't like your shirt. We can't be friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're not my friend anymore. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but that b basic thing of confronting someone, you know, the people say if you point a finger at someone, then you've got three fingers pointing back at yourself, you know. Um so, like for example, if someone, uh, like I say, I was dishonest to him, or if someone says something hurtful that hurts you, or that something sarcastic, you know, so sarcasm is like sarcasm is the lowest form of wit, they say, mm. and it means is that also passive aggressive, basically? It is really. You're saying irony is 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 often the way people make jokes, you know, mm. with uh, saying the opposite. So you could say um, the opposite to someone, but with the intention of hurting them, mm. and that's sarcasm. Yeah. So you say oh, you're a real lazy fuck, man. Yeah. You know, and meanwhile that's not true, but you're hurting the person. You yeah. Know? Maybe they have been a bit slack yeah. lately, or, or like that, whatever. You know. That no shit Sherlock, that yeah. classic phrase, or like duh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's like Jesus. Like I found that quite insightful, and you're like, duh. Yeah. Like what a fucking dick. Yeah. Oh. Obviously, this is like sarcasm 101. <laughs> like it can go a lot deeper <laughs> than <is>. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You obviously ordered like a super size, you know. <laughs> um. So. So then, I think the anger. So, okay, th there's anger there and there's fear. Mm. Fear of actually going to the person and confronting them. Mm. And the anger is that you feel um, 
belittled or you feel um, disregarded, disrespected. Um, and basically that's where the confrontation s should start, is to say to the person, you know, what you did last week or what you said last week, like really made me feel like totally disrespected, you know, and I thought like like that I was useless that I was useless you know and that you that I'm like that you see me as a piece of shit you know and I felt like belittled mm -hmm. by that comment you know or I felt disregarded or let down that you didn't arrive and you said you were going to whatever mm -hmm. the situation is is to rather start off with instead of you like the finger is to rather, rather start off with like I like how, how did I feel mm. by your by your action so rather than saying your behavior made me feel like shit yeah, say, so say I yeah. felt like shit because yeah yeah or, or rather rather say it like that than say you like a, you're an idiot man mm. you you're a liar you didn't you you made an appointment and you didn't rock up you're no. an, you're a bastard you know th that's not the way to do it yeah <laughs> because you're going to end up then you're really going to end up ending it's counterproductive up yeah totally and but it's that whole thing of uh, fool me once shame on me ah shame on you fool me twice shame on me yeah. and i feel like if you hang out with people that constantly disappoint you hurt you mm. you know it inevitably comes back like but you know you got to start looking at yourself that's why i love um yeah my re sure. my relationship with anya it's one of the only few relationships where i can be honest like you speak mm. Mm. it's weird man like so in my relationship with my wife that's it's, there it's fantastic yeah. but it's like if am i gonna tell a friend like dude <laughs> oh. you know i felt a little bit like this oh. um due to like that's so difficult for me like friendships oh. But then yeah. there's certain friendships where Depends. that's fine. Yeah. But then there's also friendships that that shit just doesn't happen. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And if they keep, if it keeps happening, then you kind of, then the friendship just maintains a certain distance, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So I listened to this Jocko Willink uh, character, not character, ex-army guy or current army guy. I don't know how you want to look at it, but he does a lot of motivational stuff. He does a lot of um, seminars and he's got his own business in management and all of that. And then people send in sometimes this Q&A. He does a Q&A. And uh, the topic was this. of um, A guy said, like, one of my friends did something that really upset me and blah, 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 blah. You know, and we're like bros and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. You know, how do I deal with it? Mm. And then he's like, if he was really your bro, he wouldn't have done something that upset you that much. Mm. So don't like necessarily... Are we back on? Yeah. yeah, I'm back on, yeah. Don't necessarily, you know, it's not like tell him to go fuck himself. Don't do that. Mm. You know, just basically keep him at a distance. Mm. Just be like, he, he uses this like very like alpha male style. He's like, noted. Mm. All right, you do that, noted. Mm. you know so just be aware that if you deal with this guy this is the type of behavior that you can expect mm. you know so yeah well that's that's interesting is because if it keeps happening i don't know I, I mean i think if you if you confront someone a friend and it's and you make some sort of progress and it no, often well, normally the person's going to apologize and say, look, I'm sorry I let you down. I, yeah. I should have phoned you and told you I wasn't going to be there or, yeah. or I made a mistake. I'm sorry. It's like that night that we had a meeting and um, no. I didn't show up. No. And I'm like, it's in the wrong day in my calendar. And no. you sat like a dick at the engine. Oh, yeah. And you chewed me, but no. you were more concerned. Yeah. But it's also like... No. And then I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. But I think for like a week, I'm like... I feel like a dick. <laughs> yeah, but then you move on, you know, um, mm. and and it might happen again, but hopefully not like every week <laughs> you know, or every time, because then 
well, maybe the guy doesn't really want to, well, maybe you don't really want to meet me for coffee at the yeah. engine, you know, and you're just saying you do, or, you know what I mean? It's like, And maybe in that situation, because I'm such a reliable guy, I would like to think, mm. if I don't show up, it's like, fuck, we something wrong, mm. because he never does it. Mm. Well, if you have a friend that does it regularly, mm. so in like your situation, your initial reaction was concern, mm. as opposed mm. to anger. Mm. So that shows that it's, I think, a quite a fairly healthy relationship where, yeah. you know, if your first reaction is anger or irritation, then maybe there's an existing problem already. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think um, I think once an apology has been made and all the confront- uh, confrontation has been had and an apology has been made, then and things and the, the relationship improves, it gets stronger. Mm. And then yeah, then that's better. I mean, it's or or that's how it is. Um, that the relationship will grow, you know, and uh, mature. Mm. I mean, ultimately, like with your with Anya, it's it's amazing to have that sort of relationship, mm. you know. Yeah, it's not easy though. No, like she doesn't. <laughs> it's taken a years to get to the point where she can apologize. Mm. But she'll still sometimes give an apology where it's like, you don't really sound sorry. Hmm. But somehow hmm. in her head, if you say it, no matter way, no matter how the feeling or the intonation or whatever, like the vo- the way the voice is projected, if you say those words, it means you're sorry. Hmm. And don't expect it to hear it again. <laughs> it's very Eastern European. I said it once. Let's fucking move on. Where it's a bit like I, I need to, uh-huh. I need to feel the, uh-huh. the apology. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But we we've, we figured our way out. Um, but yeah, it takes a lot of hard work, man. Yeah. But it's yeah. like you know what I'm thinking now, like in business, that what I was taught, uh, complaints, are opportunities, to gain your biggest regular customers. Because mm. it gives an opportunity for someone to complain. So let's say at face value, they come to your restaurant and they interact with you in a quite a non-intimate way. Come in, order burger, chips, Coke, and they bail. Mm. But then once there's a complaint and they say something, they can actually see the ethos of the business. Mm. Mm. You know, So if they say, like, listen, yeah, the food's fucking taking 15 minutes or 20 minutes too long, and now it's raw, and then they see a waiter that's like shocked and be like, shit, I'm so sorry. And then the manager comes and he's like, listen, mm. this is not right. You know, we don't see this is appropriate. Here's a gift voucher, have a dessert. And suddenly they're like, fuck, mm. look at this, people. So mm. the complaint allows for you to see a different side of the business. Mm. And it's almost like if you maybe confront people or take them on or say something, it gives an opportunity to, for a relationship to go to a deeper level mm. because then you can actually see how that person responds mm. and then you can see if, if you like it or not. Mm. But anger is a tricky one because people, my experience is people like to just Hold defend. It. Uh. It's like, if you tell me, Marva, I'm angry with you, I'll be like, fuck, what did I do? Mm. But mm. my experience is most people, I'm like, dude, this is not cool. They'll mm. be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Mm. They just start defending. Mm. And I find that difficult. Mm. Yeah, but I think that's the way of approaching The way of approaching it is the way it's going to, you know, confrontation sounds like it's like that. But it's, it doesn't have to be like that. You know, mm. it can be diffused. And people can learn from it and, and um, move on. Um, you know, with this situation with this friend of mine, um, so I was dishonest with him. I lied to him, right? And then I had to, then I had to apologize to him for lying. Mm. Actually, b- before he even knew, I went to do, I went to him and said, uh, you know, I, I lied. I'm sorry. So before he even knew I was lying, before he got angry. <laughs> um, but I was going to put this now. So, um, yeah, it's just set up a. I've lost my train of thought. But it's 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 set up a little bit of a ping pong match where, say, so he's hurt that 
I was dishonest with him. Oh, I had to, yeah, I had to think about also why was I dishonest with him? Mm-hmm. You know, wh- you know, he's my friend now, so why was I dishonest? Yeah. And then I thought, because he's going to judge me. You know, he's he's in uh, well. I've got this feeling that he's going to be judgmental, you know, yeah. and that's not something I would necessarily feel uh, with other friendships, like I said with you. So basically, your lie was withholding information. Yeah. Well, also just he, you know, he said, "Where were you?" And I said, "No, I was." Yeah, I mean, well, I was there, and I was worried yeah. he was going to be judgmental, mm, 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 mm. and he was. <laughs> 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 and uh, and he justified this honesty. Yeah, and the soap. <laughs> yeah, I've justified my dishonesty <laughs> out of a fear of uh, of being judged. Yeah. <laughs> and um, which and brings the, the question, soap opera continues. Yeah, you know? <laughs> which br- which begs the question: Why are you hanging out with people that you think are judging you, and it turns out they are judging you? Mm. Exactly. No, exactly. Which is a weird. Yeah. No. I can sit here the whole day and fucking analyze people and ask them these deep questions. Mm. And mm. then once someone asks me that shit, I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> because I'm a retard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No, no, no I'm joking. It <laughs> <No. laughs> was a rhetorical question. <laughs> I am, I am <laughs> retarded I am retar- in certain <laughs> ways, though. Well, I know I'm, ret- I'm physically, I am slightly retarded due to brain damage. But, uh, um, no, but I think this is the situation we find ourselves in sometimes. Um, but is that I a new just, friendship then? It's got a reasonably new, yeah. It's about mm. a year and a half old. Mm-hmm. It is very new. Yeah. yeah. That is new. Technically. You know? yeah. Especially yeah. if you're as old as you. Fuck you. A year, a year is like what? One fiftieth of your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, death is so speeding up. <laughs> <laughs> so that means you've been friends for two percent of your life. <laughs> right? And time is moving yeah. quickly. Eh? <laughs> yeah, and well. Yeah, one and a half percent, you know. Um, yeah, question why you hang out with um, people you feel are going to judge you. And then it turns um, out they are they judging are. you. But that's okay. It's just our journey, mm. you know. I mean, I, I've judged people and I still judge people, yeah. you know. So that, And that's the thing. I think that's the value of, of kind of what we started talking about with is that we are... We are all capable of of doing dark things. We're all capable of doing being dishonest, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's the thing is to try. Maybe I must teach him, or I must tell him not to judge. <laughs> well, maybe that's part of his his journey. Yeah. You know? And um, I, and I think it is. You know, I think um, and I must learn not to be dishonest. <laughs> For fear of being judged, mm. you know. You know what? I got a important question for me here, which I'm trying to figure out, not figure out, but why do I care about other people's judgments? Mm. You know, why? Why would I? Why would I behave in a certain way just because of an opinion from mm. someone else? Mm. You know. Well, and that's why I sometimes don't want to express my anger mm. because I'm scared of the opinion the other mm. person might mm. have. I'm scared they're going to be judgmental. Mm. So why do I care so much? Is that like also conditioned into you? Ego, from yeah. it comes back to the ego of wanting to, for me, wanting to be liked, not wanting to be um, not liked. <laughs> but is that nature or nurture? Like, where does that come from? Sure. It's probably both, huh? Probably both. Because there's some, I've got some friends that don't give a fuck. Mm. Mm. I listen to some podcasts. Okay, podcasts aren't always real because this is a, this is mm. a hour or two hours from my life out of a 24 hour day. Mm. So I might look like an awesome guy here, but I see some people and I'm like, I just don't care. Mm. I work with some people. I, you know, I interact with some people. They don't care what other people think of them. Mm. Mm. Where I'm very sensitive to that sometimes. Mm. Mm. I'm like, where does that come from? 
I quite admire that in people, and and that's something that um that I'd like to grow towards is to become more um to say how what I feel without worrying about what what people are going to think, you know, mm. and to become more um, honest mm. instead of um, and not necessarily in a hurtful way, but but. I don't know. Um, Just be yourself mm. with no shame, guilt, or, or fear of judgment. You know, yeah. fear. Yeah. Because yeah. I've gone now where I am myself. Generally, mm. Mm. what you see is what you get. Mm. If I can't hide my facial expression, <laughs> it's mm. impossible. Mm. So if you do something that I don't like, you're gonna know it. Mm. You know, even if I decide not to act on it. So I've taken this approach this last few years. I'm going to act out on it mm. regardless of what the other people, other person thinks. Mm. So I'm really good at the behavior mm. of standing up for myself. And then in the moment, I'm good. And then 10 minutes after that, I go to in a flat spin and my head starts making a lot of noise. And mm. then I start projecting and I thinking well, like, what are they thinking this and that? And I've, I've done a lot of counseling on that specific topic. That's basically been this last four months. I'm doing the right thing. I'm feeling good. And then 10 minutes later, I start worrying. Mm. And I start thinking. And I'll be anxious. And and it's crazy. We finally figured it out a little bit. But that's difficult for me. Mm. But it was it's a massive accomplish just to get to the point of... You know, just telling... It's like my neighbor's dog that's barking. It's taken me to the year to, like, finally put my foot down. Like, mm-hmm. initially, it's like, come on, dude. Like, mm-hmm. it's barking quite a lot. Then this guy's, like, super defensive and, like... Mm-hmm. So, I'm like, okay. Touchy subject. Mm-hmm. And then a few... And then we're back. And then... um, And then finally getting to the point where I'm like, take him on. Not cool, dude. And then I don't care what his response is. Mm. And then continue and then go to the farm manager and say, I don't know, man, that's been a massive learning curve. Mm. Like you talked earlier. Mm. Mm. These are just massive learning curves. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So where are you at with your friend now? Hmm. You played your ping pong and then? <laughs> well, we're kind of uh, still busy. We're still still on, playing ping pong. Still on the table, yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, I think it's okay. You know, I think... At the moment, yeah, even like today, I think it's okay. Um, um, there is a rift. There is a bit of distance. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, I think he's also self-reflecting, you know. I think he's he's, he's self-aware enough to kind of think, yeah, well, maybe I am being judgmental, you know. Mm. Why am I being so judgmental? And maybe I'm a bit jealous, you know. <laughs> maybe he's thinking those things now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking playing ping pong on fucking national yeah. television, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope he's watching, yes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, What a dick move. Like, you want to play ping pong on WhatsApp? Well, I'll go fucking record this. No, I'm uh, joking. No, I'm it's joking. Not, well, it's nothing I, w- I haven't said to him. Anyway, no, 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 so no, I'm it's just not saying. a big deal at all. I but think you know, the, I want to get my uh, psychologist on you because he told me this interesting thing of the, the yeah, triangle. Yeah, I wanted to, I've been thinking about that. I wanted to ask you about it. And because um, what I just spoke about and what we're talking about is anger. Mm. but So the triangle starts with anger. So it's he like, says the triangle starts with core emotions. Yeah. Okay. So a core emotion will be, for example, and we're now obviously looking at a, or let's say love, anger, fear, sadness, you know, those... Those, those are core emotions. Core yeah. emotions. Mm. I don't know, like, if you go deeper, like jealousy, envy, if those are core emotions. But there's, like, he says there's about six. Mm. Now, he says if you can't experience them as they are, mm. they go to the next 
corner. So which if you is bury too, them, if you don't deal with them. Yeah, then they go into anxiety. Mm. And anxiety becomes a physical experience. Mm. So we always say, I feel anxious. Mm. He's like, anxiety it's is a physical a experience. Mm. It's not a feeling. Mm. And he's, because what he's telling me is like, so what are you feeling? I'm like, Jesus, I feel anxious. I feel nervous. He's mm. like, okay, but what are you feeling? Mm. He's like, I'm like, mm. like I, I struggle to breathe. Like there's something mm. in my throat. It's shaky. Like when I get fear, uh, mm. fear the physical experience is heartburn I get heartburn when I get fucking scared mm. shit scared mm. it's like what do you feel when you get angry it's like well I'm getting warm mm. you mm. know my blood's pumping my muscles are swelling up like mm. my posture is changing like I feel so anxiety it's an experience my breath gets shortened I can mm. feel like my ribs moving a bit in on my lungs and uh mm shortness of breath mm. so he's like so that happens so you've got the core emotion yeah. anger fear love that perhaps doesn't get dealt with yeah doesn't get resolved or um acted upon maybe yeah that and if that doesn't happen then it moves into anxiety yeah or like in my situation i just struggle feeling them you know mm. Uh, and I don't know if neurological pathways mm. are also part of it because we've done some PTSD counseling mm. where I was in a car crash where a car just came out of nowhere and hit me off my bicycle. So I've got this thing of, you know, when cars are, like, you know, when cars get to a stop street, they just roll like a meter past the line. It makes me anxious because I've had a situation where they pulled in front of me and fucking hit me like really bad. Mm. But that's like a neurological thing that shoots off emotion. So we've done some stuff to like rewire that. But that's for another day. I'm trying to get him on the podcast. So mm. when the anxiety becomes too much, so you've gone from this point to the anxiety, when that comes too much, it goes into your defense mechanism. Mm. And defense mechanisms, the most standard one is substances. Mm. You know, fucking so angry, so anxious, whatever. Alcohol, or alcohol or whatever. drugs, you know. Then you can go into fucking prostitution, gambling. Mm. But then there's also another one, because I said to him, okay, I think I understand this. The other day I was so angry at this guy because he doesn't want to pay for the car insurance that he fucked up with. I'm like, I got so angry, I felt like crying. Is that like the ultimate way of experiencing anger? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, that's a defense mechanism. So you can't feel the anger. Because he's like, what do you physically feel when you become sad? I'm like, well, I feel like crying. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going into myself. Mm -hmm. I struggle to speak. Yeah. I feel a pain. Mm -hmm. So he's like, that's two completely diff different physical experiences. Mm -hmm. So if you're angry, you should feel warm. Mm. If you feel sad, you feel like, let's say, cold. Mm. So he's like, sad and anger is not the same thing. So in that situation, my it's almost like a fuse blew. I'm not in control of it. I just went to sadness. So what's happened recently is whenever I get angry, I'm like, okay, don't let it go to anxiety. Or when I get to anxiety, I'm like, fo focus on this warm feeling. Focus on this warm feeling. And then go do something about it because then i said to him but what's exercise he's like that's also part of the defense mechanism but there's constructive defense mechanisms such as exercise mm, go for a walk or you go for a walk for my boxing mm. cutting trees down he's like because mm. yeah you want to chop someone's leg off with a panga but like after you've chopped you know 50 or 100 trees down which i sometimes do you do you still feel do like it i'm like no no, no. It's like, so that's good. You blow off steam, yeah. So, and, and that's basically the triangle. But that's, let's say, anger, anxiety, sadness. Mm. You know, let's say you have a friend that irritates you, mm. constantly does it, mm. constantly feel angry. Mm. You don't do something about it. Then you get this anxiety that he's going to do it or he continues to do it or you're scared to confront. Mm. Then it goes into sadness mm. because it's sad. But it's like, why are you sad? Because of this anger originally. Mm. But it's exactly the same where sadness 
the fence so mechanism the, is anger. So the triangle can rotate as well. So there's a sure. variety of stuff, mm. but mm. we had like one hour session on this. Mm. So me trying to explain this. Mm. Mm. Uh, so I want to get him on here because that really helped me to just focus on the physical experience. Mm. And that's helped me a lot. I think that's, yeah, I was just about to say that. I think just focusing on that physical experience is actually um, the best way of actually dealing with it or being with it. Mm. Isn't that what say. mindfulness is? Mm. Maybe so, you can huh? just, I see we've been going for an hour now. Wow. So I think we'll wrap it up in about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Because not everyone's uh, capable of listening that long. But you always talk to me about mindfulness. And this I've is when the interesting stuff starts, you know. Is so it? hopefully people want to switch off now. You know? yeah, yeah, they probably switch off five minutes <laughs> after we started. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here alone. <laughs> so, because you always talked about mindfulness, and I'm like, fuck, mindfulness will help me. And I've, I've, I've looked up a bit on it, but isn't that the same, like, focus on the physical experience? Isn't that mm. an exercise of mindfulness? Mm, or what is mindfulness? Like... It's coming, I think it's coming back to awareness. It's quite interesting when the, the whole meaning of sp- spirituality, mm. spire, is breathing. And I think, well, I think just by breathing or by focusing on the breath and being aware of the in, the in breath and the out breath, one becomes a lot more aware, a lot more present. And, um, and I mean, I think that that's that's wonderful uh, to be um, t- to realize like, wow, my skin is starting to like crawl a bit, and I can feel this heat coming up my neck, and um, you know, um, it's so weird. I was in a pick and pay yesterday at Somerset Mall, you know, and um, I walked in there and suddenly heard all these birds chirping. <laughs> it was like I was in a a forest, you know. And I thought, wow, these people, they're quite progressive. They've got s- chirping birds on the, on the speakers. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and I like, was looking around. And then I had to focus up in the roof and that. And there were lots of birds like, flying around in pick and pay. It was quite an amazing mm. thing, you know. Um, I think that I, just, that I, was, um, I was quite impressed <laughs> that I heard them. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get impressed with yourself? Yeah, I was going, right. wow. You actually heard those birds, you know, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, no, but it was really great mm. to um, to hear those birds. <laughs> I think um, I think for someone that's been asleep for so long as well, you know what I mean? Like like Rip Van Winkle, you know. <laughs> Have you heard of Rip Van Winkle? Uh-uh. It's, a, it's a story uh, about this guy that went to sleep for 80 years or something. <laughs> woke up and he's... His old nagging wife had died, and he went back to his village, and his daughter, his children had all grown up. And I was asleep for a long time, you know. And I think there's a, a, a um, certain amount of joy, I think, that comes with. Look, I'm not the most aware person in the world, but it, but just that kind of thing, hearing those birds in the in the supermarket, mm-hmm. it sounds so ridiculous, but I didn't imagine them. <laughs> They were real. <laughs> were you and the only one looking at them? <laughs> I was. <laughs> so were they real? <laughs> if the tree well. falls in the <laughs> forest. <laughs> Maybe I imagined them, you know. Maybe I was um, hallucinating. I mean, how many supermarkets keep <laughs> birds in there? And you're so there. proud of yourself about your <laughs> hallucination. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to pick and pay tomorrow, stand there, look at nothing, and be proud of myself that I'm hearing birds and seeing them fly around. <laughs> no, but I hear you, man. I, I had hmm. Getting back to mindfulness, because I noticed this with my cats. Like, hmm. these cats are teaching me a lot about myself in the sense that I'll sit on the couch and I'm like, Jesus, I just want to relax. I just want to watch a bit of television. I'm just catching up on some work or whatever. And then this cat will rub on my leg or like jump onto the couch and wants to like cuddle. And it's like my activity with technology, for example, it's not necessarily present or it's with people or things that are not right here, right now. Mm. Mm. where the cat is like I can smell the cat I can touch the cat I can feel it 
Hmm. Like there's a whole sensation. And I'm like, and I struggle to just put my phone down 10, 15 minutes. Let me just play with a cat. Hmm. And it's teaching me like, Mm. how absorbed do I become with other stuff and how difficult it is for me to just be in the moment. Mm. Mm. Fuck the mindfulness where you sit like a Buddha. Mm. I, I can't do that mm. shit. Mm. No. I think in some ways that's like maybe just a bit of practice or a bit of training to be present all the time if you can, you know, be in the moment as much as possible. But what's mindfulness, a definition of that? Well, I suppose mindfulness is, is to be present, is to be in the moment, mm. is to be um, is to be in touch with your senses. So if you you can hear the wind outside blowing, um, you can feel light breeze on your skin, you can smell the, the earth of the forest. You can see these birds in the mm, 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 mm. in the supermarket. They were there. <laughs> <laughs> they were definitely there. Amazing. No, I went up to this woman and said, "Do you see those birds?" She said, "No, I don't see anything at all." <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that fish eagle up there. <laughs> I'm thinking of the story. Or Tom Waits tells a story where he's going out. He's at the checkout till, and there's a woman in front of him, and she says, "Um." Oh, you remind me so much of my son, you know. Um, and he died in the war. And she showed me, a, showed him a picture of her son, and he said, "No, I didn't look at all like her son. His son would look like half Chinese and everything." And she's, "Oh, please, can I take a, a, a photograph with you and take a selfie, you know?" And then she says, "I've got another request, you know. And as I'm leaving the supermarket, can I turn around and say to you, goodbye, son?" <laughs> <laughs> and and you say goodbye, mom. And you go, oh, well, yeah, okay, okay, just this once, you know. Feel a bit of pity for the woman. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes to the door and turns around at the door. This woman says, goodbye, son. <laughs> she says, goodbye, mom. <laughs> so then he's checking out, and the, the person checks up and says, no, that'll be two hundred and fifty rand, you know. And he says, but I've only got some bread and milk. So he said, no, your mom said you would pay for oh her grocery. <laughs> <laughs> God, <funny. laughs> yeah. Did that really happen? No, I don't no. think so, no. <laughs> <laughs> we could try it. <laughs> I'll try it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> God, funny. But do you do this mindfulness, like conscious mindfulness? So something happens, I'm like, okay, I got it now focus on all my senses what i smell what i taste what i see yeah, i what think I sometimes feel. i do yeah you know i mean I, especially if i'm walking on the mountains or in, in the forest or mm. something like that then it's i mean then for me it's almost natural you mm. know you kind of just go into this yeah. phase where you don't want where i don't want anything i don't need anything mm. i'm not um you know thinking about tomorrow or yesterday and um um, yeah, that desire, like, I want, I want a new phone, I want, it's all gone because I'm, um, I don't know, I'm just content. Mm. I know that's the one place that really, I find it, you know, it's like. In nature. Yeah. Um, and in yoga? And then in nature, I'm, I'm doing that, I'm smelling, mm. seeing colors, um, feeling the, the wind, um, and hearing sounds. What other senses are they tasting? Mm. Mm. Um, yoga as well. I suppose yoga is like I, I like yoga because it's <coughs> it brings me to focus on my body. So there is a point of focus, mm. you know. And besides the breath, but you, you, I, well, I've got to <laughs> make sure that I don't like fall over or that I don't yeah. stretch overstretch something, you know. Yeah. Like you've got to kind of be aware of your limitations of mm. your of your own body and that's a focus and that's what i like about yoga i think it's but isn't that also like it encapsulates i don't know what yoga you do but i did a couple year in front of youtube so it's mm. listening to the instructions mm. 
and then when they say just focus on your breathing it's like focus on like i listen to my breathing mm. i mm. can obviously smell whatever is in the house then it's like feeling my muscles ten mm. you know tensing so i think that whole exercise is like just brings you to focus on here and now mm. but i i i struggle with activities where it's not where there's not enough stimulus so like that i really struggle with but Yo it's like what, where, yoga yeah oh. where um like let's say it's a game of football like i'm so right here right now there's no time to think it's just it's the game so playing, that, playing, it, you playing, football, playing football, mm -hmm. you know, activities like that. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of respect for people that can do yoga, Pilates and all that type of stuff. And they're just in the zone. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck, I wish I could be like that. But mm -hmm. my head just makes too much noise. Mm -hmm. I'm also a bit mm -hmm. like uh, with my body, I can't do a lot of the moves. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm like, if I'm in a yoga studio right now with all these Zen motherfuckers, <laughs> You have this <laughs> guy awkwardly trying shit and just literally laughing out loud because I know how dumb I must look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at myself from an outside, outside perspective and I just start laughing. So that's why I find yoga difficult. But yeah. fantastic exercise, man. Yeah, and like good sex. <laughs> <laughs> good sex is even better than yoga. It's Aye. like, because um, you... You're kind of traveling mm. far away, but you're extremely present, mm. you know. Um, you're very aware of what's going on. And um, it's, a, it's a strange thing. Anyway, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on that either, nor on yoga, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> but um, but they're spiritual practices. I, you know, I haven't, I haven't practiced yoga properly for quite a while and be, or been to classes. But I do remember mm. classes for an hour and a half you'd be okay sometimes lose that that mindfulness lose that presence but generally mm -hmm. for that time period being pretty present pretty focused on the like you say on the instructor's voice yeah on the um on the movement on the breath um on, on the boundaries and the limits of the body and then at the end it's kind of just starting to cry mm -hmm. for no reason really not it's just um so it's a kind of cathartic experience you know mm. um healthy yeah you know? um it's almost just crying just from being present <laughs> in a yeah. way i don't know why I, why, why it would happen you know mm. i think um from not being busy in the head you know something like that just being still um yeah, I think there's a lot to be said for uh, silence and um, stillness. And again, I think that's where being in nature helps. Mm. And if you go with your dogs? Yeah, that's great. It's the same as going alone. Mm. Just mm. zone mm. out. Or with someone else, you know, and just yeah. being quiet, you know. Mm -mm -mm. When you're doing that uh, silence retreat that mm. you were talking about? I just haven't had a chance. I was almost ready a while back and then... Um, is that the cat's house? Uh, that's one, uh, that's a box where the cats chill in sometimes. That's cute. So in the sun, sunny afternoons, they like to lie in that and uh, chill in the sun. Mm. But that's also a nice thing for them just to climb in and mm. be a little bit hidden. Mm. This one, it's actually weird that this one's inside the box. That black one is the, the one that spends the most time in there. Mm. But this one, uh, we changed this one's. We changed both of their diets, and it is remarkable to see the change in personality in the cats. Mm. So it's the black and the white one, and the white one we call the fat fuck because it's always eating, and it looks it looked a little bit like not Garfield, like I'm being like a bit, but it had a bit of body on it. Mm. Mm. And then our neighbor said laughed at us the other day. She's like, "Marva, like come on." So we changed their diet and this one's got so much more energy from eating less mm. and it's more playful. And you saw now it was coming to my leg. Mm. 
Like before, it wouldn't do that. Mm. Only the black one would do it. Mm. But the black one naturally eats less than the white one. So it's it's mm. just to see how much less they're sleeping and now they actually want interaction with you and play. So for me to see that one in the box, there's quite a... Mm. I don't really see that. Mm. Mm. So you're on a special occasion. <laughs> So what what were we talking about? Do you remember? What did you ask me? We're talking about um, you know having the dogs in the mountain, being present. Mm. Mm. He said even with people around. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember exactly where we were. Yeah. It's just uh, that whole mindful thing. I know a lot of people dig it and um, I think I was initially taught about that in rehab 17 years ago mm. where, um, oh yeah, you were talking about crying, mm. like becoming quiet and crying. Mm. Mm. Like, I don't know, man. That's a weird one for me. Like if you want to go talk about spirituality. I don't know how this completely fits into it, but crying is probably one of the most difficult things for me to do. Oh, mm. this is coming back to the triangle wheel. Mm. So I said to him, <laughs> Sadness. if I cry, I have a headache. So headaches and crying is oh. the same thing for me. So I'll cry and then I'll have a headache. Mm. So again, that goes into sadness, anxiety slash headache, and then defense mechanism type of thing mm. there's this weird loop mm. and uh, that's the interesting thing with crying so I'm quite good at let's say feeling anger but then feeling sadness that's a difficult one for me do you cry in movies when you watch a movie or no chick flicks or? no, no. I wasn't allowed to as a kid cowboys cry. don't cry yeah. so I remember watching Lion King as a when Lion King came out I can't remember 94 or yeah, 92, 92 yeah. Um, there, yeah. I was like 7 or 8 years old and I remember that scene where Mufasa died mm. and I was like it's almost like what the fuck and it's like I can feel this thing in my throat and, and like, I feel like it I like stopped it dude I'm like sitting there with my <laughs> brothers or like uh -huh. I'm gonna fucking cry right now uh -huh. and I remember that still that's uh -huh. like how long uh -huh. ago Mm. And I remember there were a couple of moments in my life where I'm like, I feel like crying. It's like, mm. this is not the moment that you cry, you know. And uh, so for me to develop that ability, but, you know, talking about that quietness, like I was finally now after four years able to start grieving my brother that died. Mm. Like I've been busy with it. Mm. But my being busy grieving him was, you know, get on with life. Mm. you know don't sit on a pity pot mm. but then we were going inside and blah 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 and I got to the point where it's like I miss him and then I could focus on focus on missing him why do I miss him stay mm. with that stay with that mm. and then I was like okay and then I'll bump into like a random person that is associated with 20 years ago when I you know, grew up with my brother and then that triggers crying. Mm. And mm. like a few months ago was the first time I could really cry where I didn't have headaches, where mm. I could just stay with it and it was like that proper release that some mm. people talk about. Mm. Where crying always for me was associated with headaches and stuff. Now it's mm. like crying, cool, you know, dealing with that and then, and mm. it happened a few times. I'm like, how lacquer is that? Mm. I think it's quite healthy. Uh, I think... Um <coughs> I think real cowboys do cry, like when their horse dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's waiting for 20 years. <laughs> but they go around the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you're right there, no? there's something in my eye, you know, fucking <laughs> allergies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic to my horse. <laughs> I'm allergic to dead horses. No, I think it's really healthy to be able to cry as a man. I think it um, shows courage in mm. some ways. Um, yeah. And it's something I've also been worked on, you know, over the last uh, few years is like to try and learn to cry. I'm always a bit worried about crying inappropriately at the wrong moment, you know. <laughs> yeah. like, but to learn to, um, 
get get into a space where I can cry like maybe around the corner. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I think um yeah, it's one thing crying in private, it's mm-hmm. another thing crying in front of people. Mm-hmm. And then there's different types of crying. Mm-hmm. There's like I've had those where this a tear goes down. Yeah. Then there's those that like I oh, fuck I look like the most horrible person in the world probably. Yeah. But um, but I think it comes back to our first thing that we say. It's yeah. like, why do I care so much about yeah. other people's opinions? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, this is what I'm feeling. It's like, or do we feel ashamed that I'm hungry? Yeah. Okay, there are probably a bunch of people that maybe or maybe overweight, or mm. they have like body insecurities, and then they like, you know, they eat something and they feel like fuck. People are judging me or looking at me because I'm eating. Mm. But I have that on um my feelings mm. Mm. like you see I'm sad mm. you see I'm crying mm. I have to hide that mm. Mm. it's very interesting why I care so much but I know but not when you're happy uh, no no it's um yeah I suppose there are, there's appropriate times to be happy and appropriate times to be sad as well but I think there's a lot to be said for um <coughs> For staying with that feeling, whatever the feeling is, mm. to try to just st- stick. What do they say? Stick with the feeling, you know. Mm. Just, just sit with it, um, whatever it is, whether it's fear as well, or um, you know. Um, I was just thinking about the snake in the room. Like, there's a snake in the room. <laughs> no, 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 there isn't. But <laughs> <laughs> we live if in the was. area where there can be snakes <laughs> yeah. in the room. <laughs> Imagine a black mamba, yeah, in the room, and we carry. <laughs> Yeah, not we that go, oh well, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> Fucking boomslang came through the window, yeah. <laughs> oh well, uh, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. We, our dogs caught a couple of uh, tree snakes, boomslang a year. Yeah, but it's midwinter now. We won't find them now. It's we? nice and warm in here, man. Is it? No, no, it is. <laughs> I don't think I'm sitting in shorts and a t-shirt. Mm. I actually mm. moved a couple of rocks yesterday. Mm. And I'm like, like outdoor building shit, moving rocks. And I'm like, I did this one activity and I had this like, oh, fuck, what am I doing? I'm just putting my hands underneath a rock and lifting because I'm like, it's winter. We don't have the snakes here. They mm. like chilling mm. in other places. But I'm so conditioned from living on this farm to be so careful of the snakes mm. when I'm outdoors. Mm. Mm. But we've had a couple of snakes in the trees here. Yeah, but like I you saw say, one so recently, but it was a very small baby. Yeah. Well, what looks like a snake in here, all these cables? No, I was just imagining the fear, you know, of like, um, uh, of ignoring the fear. So, say so there is a boom slung, yeah, you mm. know, what are you going to do? We, we're not going to carry on chatting like normal. We'll stop the, <laughs> we'll like do something about it, you know. I probably won't. You just carry on chatting. I will just sit here and see what the fuck the snake does. Hmm. But we've become um, a, a hyper alert, yeah, you yeah. know, and... Um, no, no, I, I hear and, what you say. very present, yeah, mm, mm. yeah for sure, yeah. yeah. You hear what I'm saying, yeah. No, no, I'm yeah. definitely hearing what you're saying. Oh. No, it's, it's super interesting, man. I wanted to say something now, mm. but um, I can't remember. Oh, the example I wanted to use... Mm. You know what I find interesting about the podcast, mm. you know, relating it to our conversation? Mm. People walk in here, mm. they're super aware of the setup mm. in the camera, the lights and everything. Then we start talking and there's this definite conscious awareness of possible listeners out there, mm. the camera, mm. the lights, and then roughly around about half an hour, you just forget about it. Yeah. It's yeah. as if that's not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like, it's just me and you talking now. Mm. And it's like, if I can just achieve that in life where I'm like, I I run naked down the street and I'm like, it's just me and my fucking totty hanging (laughs) 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 and running here. Like, it's not about the other people. You know, obviously that's like crazy example, but. Yeah, I was just going to say, don't do that. (laughs) 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 Might get locked up. (laughs) No, for sure. It's true. Look at the millions of people out there watching us now, but um, dude, I have an average of seven million views. <laughs> <laughs> seven million people judging you right now. <laughs> They're gonna go search for Michael the artist. They're yeah. gonna start judging your artwork. 
put it on your Facebook and your Instagram. Really right now, I don't really care. I wish we could start again so, because now I'm relaxed. You're now in yeah, super relaxing yeah, mode. So that first half an hour is probably like a waste of time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we can, but that's why a lot of times I invite people for we the second one. do it again, one. yeah. Yeah, because the second one is generally a little bit more relaxing. Mm. I always find the podcast also a little bit weird because ideally I have a sound engineer and a technician. Mm. And a so in the first 15 minutes, I'm just like, fuck, is everything working? Are the levels right? Is the you know mm. is this thing working? So it's a very interesting type of setup, but it's like this is a hobby. Mm. I always say to people, like, ask me about the podcast and money and viewership and this and that. I'm like, listen. Mm. It's like having a garage band. Mm. It's about just enjoying mm. the jam in the garage. Mm. And if that somehow develops into doing shows and tours and whatever, record yeah. deals or whatever. Mm. But at the moment, I'm in the garage band mm. phase. And enjoying it. It's and it's about me and you. Chat, yeah. yeah, and it's um, like, fuck, some videos on YouTube has 10 views. There's one that's got 600 uh, there's some that I got fifty hundred. Then if you go to listening to it on maybe Stitcher or um, SoundCloud or you know Apple Podcasts, then maybe it's got ten or whatever mm. listens. Mm. And it's quite easy for me to get caught up in that and mm. it's be like, what's the point? Mm. But I'm like, why did I begin? Mm. Because I like talking to people. Mm. I learn from this. And mm. generally each podcast, I walk away and there's a few things reverberating. Mm. Plus some of these podcasts help other people. Mm. Now let's say you have a million viewers, but it only helps one person. Mm. Let's say you have 10 views and, and you have, it helps one person. Yeah. Like it's equally as effective. Mm. But again, I try to do this as if it's mm. only me and you, mm. um, which mm. is a, it's a quite a nice activity and exercise. And do you um, watch for comments and reply to comments? And things like um, that? I don't have any comments. I have periodic comments, but because I have periodic comments, I can see them. <laughs> like if I get one comment every two weeks, mm. like I see it automatically. If I got like a thousand or a hundred comments, I probably wouldn't read through it. Oh. And you respond to the comments? Or yeah, but it's because I know the people responding. Yeah. However, there's a couple of comments that came through, which I didn't... It's all been positive. Like, mm. Mm. no one's going to listen to this shit mm. if they're an arsehole. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's quite cool. It's like cool, mm. cool comments. And I'll just be like, thanks a lot. Awesome. Mm. I post some stuff on Instagram. Mm. And then some people will comment. Mm. Jesus, this cat's playing. And then... Um, mm. Uh, it's just positive comments at this point. So I'll just mm. be like, someone said the other day, I love this camera angle because each episode has got like a different venue. I'll be like, oh, thanks a lot or really enjoyed that or... Mm. Mm. But yeah, which is nice. Um, mm. But I just try to focus on having a good time with you mm. and whoever's sitting there. Mm. And, uh, and then obviously once you leave here, you know, go think about some of the stuff that you said. That's mm. a cool thing also with editing the stuff afterwards. Mm. Like, I'll have to go lip sync everything. So you get these batches where you, uh, oh, yeah, we talked about that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Let me actually listen to that five minutes there. Mm. So it's a lot of this is learning for myself. Mm. Mm. And it's just entertaining. I work with dumb people. Mm. <laughs> it's difficult to say that, but I work with a lot of dumb people. Mm. Um, and before anyone gets offended, there's a lot of ways that you can analyze what does it mean to be dumb. But I work with a lot of uneducated people mm. and it gets to me. Mm. It really gets to me. Mm. You know, I had a person inquiring today, I want to do your training at your business, but I don't have any money. Mm. So what now? So I said to them, I want to go to checkers and buy a chicken, but I don't have any money. What, what do you think I should do? <laughs> <laughs> and so what did they say? They, she said, I'm going to wait for my mom uh, to make some money and then I'm going to go buy that chicken. 
So this one was actually bright. I think she was just going for a little bit of a charity a case, you know, mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. But I work with a lot of dumb people. So what happens is I talk to people like you and other people. And I'm like, it's a, on a fairly advanced level or it is on an advanced level. It stimulates a lot within me. And then I'm like, cool, my batteries are recharged. I can mm -hmm. go back and do like my charity work again. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. how the that's podcast balance, almost yeah. helped me. And mm -hmm. you know, with my brain damage and my spinal problems i can't do a lot of activities that i used to mm. you know so i had to find a new way of mm. plus i'm lucky mm. you saw me like two days ago when i walked down the street like i talked to people mm. so i'm quite lucky that i know a lot of people mm. and i used to listen to a lot of podcasts and i find it interesting and then i got to the point of <laughs> i got to the point where I can actually sit with people and talk directly to them. Mm. I don't have to listen to people around the world. Like I still do, mm -hmm. but I have the opportunity to just sit and talk to people. And I rather choose that than sitting and listening to a three hour podcast, which I did a lot of times. Mm. Mm. But I think also like a year, two, three, four, five, six, seven, when the podcast was so big in my life, I was at a difficult place in my life where I wanted to be a little bit more alone. Mm. And then this last year, getting a little bit healthier, this is a form of mm. interaction that mm. I love. Mm. And the other evening when we were out with the young man, yeah, it was nice. Huh? Well, that's the really that's good, the best yeah. one, but this is also this mm. is a bit different, mm. Mm. and this is mm. interesting. Mm. I think also because I used to be a musician, mm. so I'm quite used to being on stage or having to go record something. And, you know, music is, for me, you're an artist. It's a form mm. of expression. Mm. I feel this, and there's a, you know, in art, you have a physical, this is what I feel. This mm. is my interpretation. And music is also similar. Mm. Like, if you listen to this, you're going to be like, I feel that. Mm. Now, this is, for me, the ultimate form of expression. Mm. You mm. know exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. Mm. You know, so this is also a, a, a healthy environment for me. If that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Any, uh, listen, man, if anyone wants to check your art out, mm. is there a website or a place they can do it? Yeah. Um, www.moonlightandmagic.co.za. One word, moonlight and magic. A and D magic, yeah, one word. Moonlight and magic, yeah. .co.za. Mm. And if they want to buy anything, can they contact you? Yeah, through that website. And if they want you to make anything for them, can they contact you? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Wicked. Yeah. Cool, wicked, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we getting out of here? Yeah, let's get out of here. I've enjoyed it. Eh? Yeah, thanks, lucky, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I'm not going to say uh, goodbye. Oh, I'm going gonna to stop recording <laughs> and we're going to continue talking cock here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to real All right, thank you for coming to the studio today. Oh, yeah. <laughs>